I came a long way to building the most powerful engine in automation. It all started with the 4,730 horsepower V16, then the 7870, 10,200, 12,300, 14,500, 16,450, and now over 17,000 horsepower. Not only that, I've managed to fit this engine into a car to see how it drives in Beam and G Drive. Hey guys, it's Tries here, and let's go over the car and the engine that I got right here. So with this current car here, the Beowulf Cypress XS, basically the successor, not necessarily a successor, but another lineup of the Beowulf Cordova, where I made the 14,500 horsepower car like back in February in 2023. So brief overview of this car, the panel material, it's made out of steel because I want this to be heavy as possible in a way, compared to having a carbon fiber type of setup, with the panel material because of course carbon fiber is lightweight and it will generate much more wheel spin compared to a steel panel material because of it being heavy but with this powerful engine i don't think it's gonna be much of a difference and the usual monocoque chassis steel and the engine placement is a front longitudinal with this big bad boy right here and the front and rear suspensions i decided to use a double wishbone for the front and the back wheels for the vehicle and here's what you've all been looking for. So for the engine, it's a V16 engine, V9 degree V16 engine, which the V16 just saying, if you don't have this, that this particular engine, you have to buy the V16 DLC in the Automation Game Store in the Steam, which is like $10, I believe. So it's a V16 made out of magnesium for the sake of weight, but it's not really the best in real life. With the bore and stroke maxed out for the family capacity, each at 120 millimeters each to get the engine size to 21,715 cubic centimeters or 21.7 liters. In a dual over cam 5 valve made of aluminum silicon, and for the bottom end of the engine. So, with the bottom end, well, with the bore right here, I did lower this to 108 millimeters. I downbore this, and I also downstroked this to a 92.5 millimeters to get the true engine size to 13,558 cubic centimeters. And crank car rods, pistons, just pretty much the best materials built steel crankshaft, lightweight titanium car rods, and regular forged pistons because of the high torque stress and a harmonic damper implemented with the balance and master counterweight kept it as is to the 110 slider, which is almost 25 pounds of counterweight. The compression is set to a 9.4 to 1 ratio, cam profile at a 51, so above a normal setting, and the springs and lifters backs out to 100. With VVT at all cams, and the RPM went set to 10,300 horsepower, so a high rubber. And for the turbocharger, this was a pain in the ass for quite some time, especially with the top end of the engine too. Same thing with the variant capacity, making this more powerful because of adding or decreasing stroke of the engine. So for the turbocharger, like I'm saying, a quad turbo setup with a smart boost type of system with the inner core, maxed out to 12,100 horsepower, a big boy, alright. And the turbocharger itself, it's a twin scroll ball bearing setup with the compressor size set to 119.5 millimeters, the turbine at 62, uh, 66.2 millimeters, the air compressor trim, the third section at a 41, and the maximum boost at 24.66 psi. For the fuel system, it's pretty much the usual, like my most powerful engine series, a direct injection throttle per cylinder race intake with the manifold size set, I decreased it to a 35, running on nitrobethene, which is a top fuel, funny car type of dragster fuel. With the ignition timing map at a negative 5, which is the advanced setting as possible, the fuel mapping maxed out to 100 to make it rich as possible. And finally, for the exhaust, it's a tubular racing type of headers with the header size set to a 59. With a dual exhaust, with the exhaust size set to 203 millimeters or 8 inches exactly, with no cats and no mufflers to get the true engine performance, the engine horsepower rating. Which we get the power rating at 17,203.9 horsepower at 10,200 RPM and a torque of 8,858.1 pounds with a torque at 10,200 RPM. So like I was explaining about the bottom end of how I managed to get the power better at the high end and improve power in general is because mainly the big thing is that torque is the enemy because you can see right here at the stress graph is that we're at 99% of stress applied to the pistons and carons in terms of torque. But it seemed like mainly lowered the bore and more importantly the stroke seemed like it lowered a lot of torque and boosted the RPM instead of like dropping off at like 9,000, like 9,500 RPM and dropping off. As I was lowering the stroke, I managed to get up to over 17,000 horsepower. It was like at 16.5, 
and then they decreased the stroke even more, 166, 789, 17,000, and later it got up to this number right here, which I believe is an automation record as of version 4.2.42, which is not the Ellisbury update, which is 4.3. And speaking of the Ellisbury update, once they add the superchargers, which is the second phase of the uh, 4.3 update, that's we're pretty much going to be adding a new season of build the most powerful engines from the supercharged engines and then back to the turbocharged engines and hopefully the natural aspirated engines once that second phase of the update is dropped. So anyways, let's give you a listen of what this beast sounds like right now. It's like the freaking torque twist you see in there at the end. It's almost like your free-to-play freaking Chris moves got him leaning right here as the engine feels like it wants to just leave the chat and break off from the little engine mount thingy and just be free. So going over the vehicle trim, just basically the core functions of the vehicle trim. So the body type, as I didn't really explain, this is a bottom body, which I believe is a 2010's like luxury body, which you can see right here. It says 10's luxury V2. Wish you could check that out in the Automation Steam Workshop, in the Steam Workshop in the Automation Game to download this body mod. So for the core functions, I like the drivetrain here, so for the drive type, it's a 4x4 setup instead of a rear drive or all-wheel drive, because neither of these two setups here, rear drive or all-wheel drive, the suspension and tires break off of either of these two drive types, kind of like the, the, the Beowulf Cordova. Either the rear drive setting or the all-wheel drive setting. The moment we hit the gas pedal, boom, the tires just stamp off the suspension, running the car undrivable. So it seems like a 4x4, as I tested, works the best with a dual clutch 7 speed with the top speed set according to automation at 482.6 miles an hour. So for the tires, they're semi slick tires, the best you can get in this game. You don't have any, have any racing slicks, unfortunately, at the moment. So they're back style, 395 millimeters for the front and the back with some 20 inch rims, carbon fiber rims to be specific. And the brakes, yeah, 420s up front, carbon ceramic six pistons at the front, carbon ceramic one pistons in the back because of the brake bias that we got here, which is kind of janky. The aerodynamics, according to automation, while using a racing diffuser to boost the downforce in particular. According to automation, with the rear downforce at the top speed of almost 300, almost 400 miles an hour, about 6,000 pounds of rear downforce, so about 3 tons? Yeah, 3 tons of rear downforce and almost 1 ton of 1,640.9 pounds of front downforce at top speed, almost 400 miles an hour. And the interior, who cares? One seater, basic interior, no entertainment whatsoever. It's just you going vroom vroom, crash crash, oh, what a relief it is suspension who semi cares about this we got some active sport springs and racing type of setup drop the ride height and got a result of this so anyways before we drive this monster in beam and g drive despite these huge this huge list of problems we got here which i'll list right here such as the brakes are suffering from severe brake fade the downforce at top speed is too high the engine reliability is too low to sell when we're quality issues tendency to oversteer for a rear damage be too hard the engine being quite full the car issue the wheel spin clearance issues side the engine being quite narrow the pistons kind of rods toward crankshaft pistons kind of rods high rpm and torque stress semi slick tires front camper is region high wheel spins region cars drivability rear tires have a very low profile <laughs> let's go over to bmg drive and test out this freaking nature out right now so here we are at the wide open spaces of the grid small pure map with the Beowulf Cypress XS with some Michigan plates on here because, well, welcome to the Motor City in freaking desolate ass Detroit, Michigan. So seeing that we got this wide open space here, let's see what it's like driving this here car. And also, let's test out the basic performance test with this car with the 0-62 acceleration test, followed by the 62-0 to zero brake test, and lastly, hopefully, a top speed run if I can reach a top speed with this car. Which I guarantee I'll probably do so because I'm probably gonna run into some overheating issues, but let's see. Let's see when I accelerate right now. Gunning it. 0 to 62 in 2.43 seconds of 112.64, uh, yeah, 46 feet, I meant. <laughs> I can't reach today. So the brakes. While the RPM is having a meltdown, can I just go to second gear? 
Uh, worse. So, breaks. On the way... 62 to 0 in 2.53 seconds of 108.95 feet, so time-wise and distance-wise, kind of like the 0 to 62 test, the acceleration test, they're roughly the same. So distance-wise, about 3.5 feet, and time-wise, about 1 tenth of a second. So top speed, 200 miles an hour right now, so we're pretty much going way faster than the Bugatti. Yep, oh, turbocharger overheating, as expected. So what did I get with the Beowulf? Piston rings damaged... Uh, time to do some modding if this engine does blow up, or I go slower. And look at that, turbocharger is dead. Let me see if I can mod, like, the turbocharger overheating and the torque threshold real quick. So I believe it's in the engine metadata right here with the new update, so I believe it's just engine, the Camzo engine? And thermals enabled, so this is line 191 of this particular car, so change true to false, add max torque rating, is this it? Let's just add a 9 there just to make things more OP. This might be it, so let's hit control save, control S to save this car, and go back to beam and G drive, and hit control R to reload the car, and see if this worked out. So the turbocharger overheated at around 300 miles an hour, so let's see, 300 miles an hour, and the engine should have broken apart like around 350, let's see, 350. We're going faster. We're gaining some lift. Oh no, can we reach at least 400 miles per hour, please? Not 391, according to airspeed. We're at gear 6, what if I overwrite to gear 7? We lose power. I guess... <laughs> 391 might be our limit because of the freaking lift that we got here. I guess I should've put down like maybe 3 or 4 like invisible lips to forcefully add downforce to the front of the vehicle. Or I could just cheese the system. Go to Jupiter. Terrible idea. Alrighty, so let's take this out to a track to see how it really performs, rather than just going into a straight line. So here we are at the modded racetrack of the Sukuba Circuit, aka the most stereotypical Gran Turismo track out there. So anyways, I got the Beowulf Cypress right here, and after I do this here time trial, which is a rolling start with two laps, I think I'll bring out the Beowulf Cordova and see a comparison between this car and the other car doing two laps around this here circuit. So start things off here with the Cyprus in. Ready? Go. The most delayed handoff. I wasn't expecting that type of tachometer in the bottom right. And by God, the wheel spin is a joke. And the tire's deflated already! All right, made it through the first corner. How about these little groups of S's right here? Kind of like Gran Turismo about the... Is it the 370 in Gran Turismo 7? And the Honda Accord Euro for the PSP version? We are in the grass. I know it's the 370Z, I believe, which they call the Feral Lady Z because they go by the Japanese type, where they call it over there. And Honda Accord Euro, which is basically like an Acura TL in North America. I think you race at this race track. I think the Honda Accord is like overtaking a certain amount of drivers before the race is over. And the 370Z, I believe you just maneuver a series of S's, make the hairpin like left-hand corner, and you're done. So a first lap, not too disastrous at the moment. 1 minute 2 seconds, 718 milliseconds. I don't know what it's like compared to the difference between this car and an actual race car doing a single lap around here. I believe that race car would smoke this particular car. And kids, like I said before throughout the video, if it's powerful, does it mean it's literally fast and agile? As you see here, I'm going slow to the corners and hand around the throttle and I'm generating wheel spin and getting a crap ton of speed. And the steering capabilities suck too. It's on a Formula 1 car or nothing like that. And coming out Tires deflated! One minute, two seconds, 677 milliseconds. I thought we were gonna miss that. So, a total time of two minutes, five seconds, 394 milliseconds with the Beowulf Cypress. So, let's go to free roam and crash this car. And defy the laws of physics. Getting stuck in the wall, kind of like a handful of body tracks. So, the tires were deflated at the very end, which fortunately I was able to cross the finish line as so. So, what happened here? So, but the tire just, did it, like, break apart, like, in the, the the road in the grass, or did it break apart in the wall? I don't really know. 
So let's try out the other car, the Beowulf Cordova, and see if I could beat the Cypress. And there goes <laughs> something with the car as we just base drop as so, just giving ourselves a grand introduction. So again, two minutes, five seconds with the Beowulf Cordova, which was my 14,500 horsepower car after the 12,000 horsepower engine I made like over a year ago. So that's the look at the car, kind of a janky, somewhat radical, simply designed hypercar. So let's start this off here in ready, go. Revs up to... This was modded. This ain't stock. Can I go back and make this stock? Because this is cheating. Alright, so I re-exported a Cordova, and I rebade the 14,500 horsepower engine back in automation, so the car is completely unchanged whatsoever. So again, two laps, rolling start, in ready, go. And all-wheel drive, 10 speed, stock grip. Damn. That handled pretty nice right there, hit the brakes. It was going nice if I would hit the brakes a little early. Alright, so going through the S's, in the brakes again, I'm kind of like on and off the throttle so I don't go too fast, or drift too hard, or go too wide and screw up my lines, thus screwing up the entire time trial where I have to restart yet again. But it seems like the Cordova is doing pretty damn good compared to the Cypress where that thing is a boat because of that 3.5 meter wheelbase versus... Get off the grass, please. Please, get off the grass, compared to this 2.6 or 7 meter wheelbase supercar bot that I got here. We're gonna get a first lap time. 1 minute, 511 milliseconds. That's gonna be butchered really fast. Damn, it's butchered. So, kept it off the grass compared to the last one. 58 seconds, 595 milliseconds, that's what I'm talking about. So, under a minute, we could probably beat the Cypress, because... Look at that, we're much more agile. Break traction. We can break much traction a little bit more easily compared to the, uh, the, the Cypress, the other car. Compared to Cordova, I can break traction. And of course... Mess up my corner. I still got this in the bag, coach. I can still play, coach. And coming out of the final straightaway... I got stuck... I got stuck there! 1 minute 934 milliseconds, which beats the Cordova, or the Cypress. Of a 1 minute 59 seconds, 528 milliseconds. So, I managed to beat it by just about 6 seconds compared to the Cypress. So next up with both the Cordova and the Cypress, let's bring this bad boy, both of these bad boys down, down a ramp here at the brand new, still a paid bot, still under development, Car Jump Arena, the 2023 model. Where we got a huge ass ramp that we can go down and fly and do all that good stuff coming to the original car jump arena map. So let's take it to the top of the ramp right now. So here I am lined up perfectly at the little grid marker here, just like damn perfectly, especially on the front bumper, like where it's aligned to, including the tires too, which is pretty nice little touch. So let's drop down the ramp here. See that we got the green lights out in my face instead of the one light, two light, three light, four light, five light, and go with the original map. So let's go. Very slowly because the electronics to control the ESC going pretty stupid. How do I do this? Control Q? Yep, turn it off. Now we're talking. So let's go to 70 miles an hour, gun it. So I, I didn't want to go too fast in case I were to like fly off the ramp here. So speed 267 miles per hour as we base drop. So how do I slow down on my controller? Let's just do that. So where were we, where were we at? Like past the 500 marker? 565 meters? Let me see. No, that's 650... 665 meters, so... Let's say it's triple six. To turn your guys off. So, full time. On our roof. And in the pond. Or, pool. Why don't we call it a pond? <laughs> Made it to broken because it hit the freaking retaining wall here at the pool. So hit a roof first, all thanks to the aerodynamics and downforce of this vehicle. So let's find some flat land by putting it right, um, drop it here. Nice landing as we got the red flags going off, so shut up, mate. So, the looks of this car, we pretty much made a highly aerodynamic, like, chop top kind of car that we got here from landing on our roof. Looks pretty nice. The rest of the car, not so much. 
Now, the same thing with the Cordova, Accelerate, uh, also Traffic uh, Trash Control 2. Uh, wait. It drops the ride height going to Sport? Yeah, it's interesting. So, go down, 80 miles an hour, Accelerate, all the way down. So, about 270-something miles, like 267 was my launch speed. We get 295 right there! <laughs> So kids, faster or more powerful doesn't always mean faster. And we're just shy of the 700... Is it really? Hold on. I think we're just shy of the 700 meter mark of our impact. Wow. So, unfreeze physics. Tumbling upon tumbling. The main engine is broken as it's doing some ninjutsu stuff. And we're gonna hit the fence. And come to... A rest with the engine detached and still now it's at a rest. Well, final look at destruction of this vehicle. Well, we got the car completely mangled up and the engine detached with the drive shaft, the drivetrain completely detached too with the turbochargers, and this drive shaft too detached. And the rear wheels, well, that rear wheel is gone, I believe. That one too. And the left uh, left wheels are still intact. Wow. At least it held up fairly well compared to the roof impact of the Cypress. So you're probably thinking, is more power better? Not with the Bale of Cypress excess. Its main reason why the car sucked in agility is due to it being front engine, especially for having a 17,200 horsepower, 13.5 liter V16 engine. Not only that, there are a whole lot of car bodies that can fit this massive engine and automation to be driven in BMG. If it were to be mid-engine, like the Cordova, it probably would have performed better despite the crazy amount of wheel spin. So kids, if you were to make a stupidly powerful front-engine luxury hyper-sedan, stick to using a basic V12, which would have been more suitable than a huge V16. So anyways, that'll do it with automation and BMG Drive. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.